You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found in the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. Today, we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from Jim Edwards from the Home Advocate Madison. Jim, how are you feeling? Great today. Thank you. Awesome. So tell me, what is the Home Advocate? Home Advocate Madison, the Home Advocate is, well, I'll go back just a little bit. I saw there was a uh, a real need for people in the home improvement business. Mm -hmm. And so if we ever look up... uh, like the Better Business Bureau, you look sure. at our complaints. Sure. If you add up all the complaints about home renovations, they would easily be number one complaint. Oh, sure. Not even close to anything else. Sure. And um, so I knew there, and I could see people getting in trouble, getting scammed, whatever. And mm-hmm. everyone's heard, you know, uh, either themselves or a friend or, or someone who's who's been hurt somehow financially or, or whatever through the home improvement business. Sure. So my job is to kind of... You know, I, I saw a need for a home advocate. I need someone to stand up for all these people because mm-hmm. uh, most people don't know the rules. They don't know sure. what, what, what their rights are, Okay. what they shouldn't shouldn't ask, what they shouldn't shouldn't do, right. um, what the usual protocol is, Sure. everything. Um, everything from contracts to money payments to the work done to warranty issues, sure. all those things. So what they do is they... Uh, hire me, and then I kind of I'm kind of their advocate. So that's okay. why I came up with that name. So a homeowner would hire you to help them navigate essentially the the shark infested waters, let's say, of Absolutely. home improvement yeah, companies and try all. to make it a, a much smoother transition than what's been happening in the sure. last you know 20, 30 years. Sure, if not longer, right? Yeah, I mean, right, a, right. Just that that's all I've seen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the first right. time somebody. Hired somebody else to do some work on their cave or whatever. Yeah, I imagine. yeah. That uh, the that home renovation person yeah, or whatever. Thor didn't. Thor ripped them off and right yeah. was nowhere to be found. Cashed the check. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Yeah. I just had a um, a client of mine that was dealing with uh, liens, with a lien because in the construction company they can do the home liens and all that okay, kind of stuff. Okay, right. And I thought it's so interesting that how many industries have a tool like the lien. That is just automatically implemented. Yeah. Like there's it, just this arm's length trust, if that, between homeowners that and the re- renovation companies. Because either people aren't paying or the renovation companies aren't doing what they're saying that they're going to do. And there's just this such a lack of trust in the industry that rules like that have to have to come into play. It's crazy. And that brings up another good point. The lien is basically to protect... The renovator, mm-hmm. the builder. Yeah. There's not a whole lot there that's easily accessible for the homeowners getting ripped off right. by the builder or renovator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So hence the advocate. Yeah. We live in a time right now, the economy is doing well. Mm-hmm. So construction is going gangbusters. Right. Houses are psycho expensive. Right. Right. So people have more equity available or money available to throw out their house and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they don't want to sell, so they're fixing up and all that stuff. So... Home improvement companies are busy, crazy busy. They've been like that for uh, going on four years now. Okay. So what happens is uh, uh, in the, the, there's so little inventory of houses mm-hmm. to be bought out there. Yeah. So let's say in real estate, they have a, a metric that says one through five. Okay. And in order for the, if the exact amount of buyers meets the exact amount of sellers, it's a five. It's Okay. Easy. Right now, in the last three years, they've been about a one. Oh. Over one because there's just no inventory out there. Wow, okay. So what happens is everyone's remodeling rather than moving. Cause sure. Because there's just no good move. Sure. So so help us, just walk us through, let's say um, I got a house and I want to do some renovation project. Let's say I just want to redo my kitchen or something like that. Right? right. So I would give you a call, right? Right. And then just walk me through the process of how that works. All right, so I come over and we try and make it within 48 hours. We get over there, and uh, we talk to them. You know, sit down and just talk about 
what they why they called me, what they want to do. Mm-hmm. A lot of times they want to renovate to sell. Okay. So that's a little bit different sure. than just renovating to live in. Sure. Um, some a lot of people renovate to live in, but with the idea of selling in like five years. Mm-hmm. So that's a third scenario. Sure. So anyway, we go over all the scenarios. We go over it. All their uh, all their projects that they want to get done, mm-hmm. and then we'd sit down. And I'd come up with ballpark, uh, you know, pretty close ideas of what this is going to cost them. Sure, prioritize things according to uh, their wish list, and then I go. My job is to go out and match them up with uh, all you know pre vetted, top of the line people that are still within their budget. Okay, when you say people, you're talking about contractors, contractors, and stuff like builders, that? right? Sure, right. So. You must have experience, I, I imagine, in the building world. To yeah, get into this. I've been in it forever. It's just my first job. I keep telling people was uh, I took a, a semester off of college and I went down almost a full year. And I went down to Florida, and that's when I got into construction. Okay. And my first job was uh, just professional grouter for tile. Oh, really? Yeah, but oh, it was tough. We had to. Uh, Mixed grouts in five gallon buckets as fast as you possibly can. You had a cruise of three. Sure. And the other two guys were picking them up five, one in each arm, and running up, you know, three flights of stairs to the top of the uh, apartment buildings and giving the grout to the tile guy and running back down and doing it over all day long. Holy cow. And then we learned how to do the actual grout. And then you went from that to actually learn how to tile set. Okay. And so that was my, my, and then I got into it pretty heavy into the, uh, late 80s, early 90s, when mm-hmm. I started working with window companies. And so okay. On, learning all about windows and sure. roofing and so on. Installing, selling? Did it all. You start off and you're installing, but okay. that's, that's to kind of learn how to sell. Sure. And then a lot of times you're doing both. You're doing the okay. installation and the selling and so sure. on. So. Windows are such a weird, they're just a peculiar thing to me. Yeah. Because I think, um, for me, it just seems like the... Um, Oh, my mind's going 50 different directions. <laughs> it seems to me like the, the LED lights or something like that, where they say they're going to last 50 years or whatever, right. last some length of time. I just feel like they've been on the market long enough that we don't need to see light bulbs in the store anymore because all the light bulbs have been replaced. Right. Where windows, I think there's houses that have been built, and they're 5, 10 years old, and they're needing replacement windows. And it just yeah. seems like that should be more permanent than it is for something that's it should essentially be. static. And again, and I do. I've had a few people call me up and want me to do their home inspection before they bought the house, mm-hmm. even in a brand new construction. You wouldn't think sure. you need it, um, but you go in there, and I can. I walk right in, and the first thing I look at is the windows. Sure. And I go over there, and I can just tell them right away. Here's your window. Here's probably the brand it is. Mm-hmm. Here's the good, the pros and the cons of each. Sure. But most homes, when they're built, are not built to last just like everything these days right sure it's not like in the olden days where you built a house and you put in these great old growth forts right uh, wood windows that yeah. are supposed to last 50 years yeah now even new homes are putting in vinyl windows okay and uh the ones unfortunately the ones they're putting in you even in parade homes and nicer homes mm-hmm. they're putting in an apartment grade vinyl window which when you say apartment grade just help me with that yeah apartment grade means that for one thing the actual sash the actual window itself is thinner Okay. And then, uh, and then the uh, uh, it doesn't have the high grade vinyl. That vinyl is probably half as thick as it should be. Oh. And the insulation value is not nearly as what okay. it should be either. So you're talking about the cheapest window they could yeah. possibly find. Yeah. Right. Because okay. you know it's all about money, right? Sure. So and then now, not only do you have poor window in the beginning, but then you also have a poor warranty with that window, and then the install is probably subpar also. Gotcha. All right. So um, uh, that's what. When people talk about windows, my house is only ten years old. Why well, have to, you know, spend twenty five thousand all on new windows? Sure. Well, they gave you an apartment window. Sure. And if you use them a lot, then there's uh, eventually they won't open. So the main idea is that people, the builders, are essentially banking on people not knowing right the difference between an apartment grade window and right a better one. Right. It's like the average person you walk in and you look at brand new carpeting. You can't tell if that's low, medium, or heavy grade carpeting just okay. by walking on it. Sure. Same thing with the window. So it's all about all right. money. You know? So in a few years, you'll be able to tell. But Same with the window. Brand in new, a few sure. years, you'll be able to know if that's a good window or not in a few sure. years, too. Just like everything. Interesting. Yeah. All right. All right. So you doing? You were installing, and I imagine you saw construction companies doing shortcuts or doing the good oh, thing. Oh, all the, the time, right thing. yeah. Even from basic stuff like uh, putting a little foam around the cavity when you're done. And that's sure. actually pretty big mm-hmm. and it would t- cost them literally a, 
you know, 50 cents to do it. But they sure. just don't because it's time. Interesting. So now air is going to come flying in there. And, yeah. And in the winter, if I uh, come in with my thermal imaging infrared camera and I point it up to the window, they can see the blue right around their window. Uh -huh. It means it wasn't foamed. And sure. the, air, the cold air is coming right in. Sure. So. so you're talking not even necessarily through the glass itself, but yeah. you think, hey, that's going to be cold, right? It's right. not going to be as, as high of an R value as a wall, but mm -hmm. you're talking just the perimeter around the window. Right, right. Which it was as simple as, we talking just stuff foam in there or spray, spray foam spray or Spray foam is better. They used to okay. stuff fiberglass bad in there, but now a little spray foam is, will go a long way. Sure. And like I said, it literally, literally it takes less than a minute. Yeah. But I don't know why they don't do it, but I see it all the time. Weird. Yeah, I've seen people who put in $40,000 worth of top-of-the-line windows, mm -hmm. and they said they still there's something wrong with them. So I went over there and checked them out. I said, I could tell right away. Give me my putty knife. And then we take a little piece off the trim, and sure enough, you can look outside. Oh, and, you're kidding. Yeah, I could spent $40,000 for top-of-the-line windows. Sure. But it was the install in this case. Sure. So what it, what it, like what would you do? Well, because I imagine you were representing the company that installed those windows. No, I wasn't there. They hired me to come take a look at it. Oh, really? Okay. Find out what's wrong. Okay. So like, but when I went there, I said, "Well, get the window company. I want their top guy there, mm -hmm. their manager, whoever. I want them there. Yeah. Because like, if I'm going to do all this, we all need to be there. So yeah. we went there because it was about an hour drive for me. So we got there, and at first the the manager was all in the huff that I was there. Sure. And then once we <laughs> Checking started, my work. Yeah. And then once we started opening up a couple, then all of a sudden he was all mousy. And sure. the owner was irate at him. I bet. Yeah. I said, and it's it was very expensive trim. Cherry would trim. He had on all his windows. So they had to come back and carefully take off all that trim. Sure. Spray and put it back in. And then there'll be touch-ups because there'll be drywall marks and there'll be this right. and that. Right. So if they would have just done it right in the first place. <laughs> it would have just taken a couple minutes and the 50 cents, whatever, and yeah, just absolutely. Yeah. do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But sometimes, uh, some I don't know about this particular company, but some companies uh, subcontract out for their windows. Okay. Just like they do for a lot of their stuff. Sure. And then you have no control. So they would have no idea either way. Right. And so what they do is they pay the subcontractors per window. Mm -hmm. So anywhere is from fifty dollars to four hundred dollars a window to put mm -hmm. in. Okay. And so you can imagine it's all about speed then. Sure. You can make eight hundred dollars that day, or you can make you know half that if you're slow. Sure. So they're just gonna skimp wherever they can. And just gotcha. Pop out these windows. All right. All yeah. right. Interesting. Yeah. I imagine you run into builders or companies that are doing the right thing. It's not all bad, right? You know, I mean, I'm yeah. asking for hope here. <laughs> yeah, you're still not going to get top line windows unless you. So when the builder comes here, say, hey, "Here's the house that we got planned. Here's the uh, here's the uh, amount," and then you tell them right there what what's your window. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know any better, you can Google it, learn something, talk to some window people, and ask for a window upgrade. Mm -hmm. And then he'll charge a little bit more, but that that's the right move right there okay because it's kind of like pay me now or pay me a lot later sure sure so um yeah that's the best thing to do but most people w would have would have no idea right so i've even had people hire me and look at plans with them okay and interesting had, yeah, okay and this last year i had two couples call me up and pay me to come to their house mm -hmm. sit down the blueprints look over all the tables sure uh i want to see what kind of windows i want to see all kinds of stuff right um from the carpeting to the landscaping to the roof to the so the, the weight of the shingles, mm -hmm. I didn't know everything. I could tell them where they want to spend some money to upgrade. And so sure. On. And the builders will be, most good builders will be open to that. Right. Well, they should be. Right? Yeah. It's but talking about a lot of money. There. Yeah. And they, you, you would think they'd be better anyway because then that's less callbacks for them. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, come back over the house you built me. It's <laughs> no good. They should have done it right in the first place. Right. Charge, right. A little, charge a little bit more, but have a beautiful house. Sure. So how do you, when a client calls you up and they're working with you, are you doing what you can to verify that the builders are doing the right thing, the foam in the windows and stuff like that? Or No, I'm not. I've never been asked to uh, expedite the house where you go sure. out there every day and check on everything. Right. Um, the best I can do is either look at the blueprints and tell them, here's why you need to upgrade this. Mm -hmm. Or when it's all done, they have me come over and do my thorough Gotcha. Checking uh, inspection. Then. So you're verifying after the fact that the job was done right. Mm -hmm. okay. And unfortunately, that can be too late because there's a lot of stuff to drywall hides and stuff. Sure. So it's hard for me to verify that things were done right. Right. Um, but uh, if you have a good builder, that shouldn't be a problem. But mm -hmm. again, what's a good builder? Who knows what a good builder right. is? So essentially, is the 
the homeowner is relying on you to then find the good builders based on your contact mm -hmm. pool, right? And renovations, especially. Um, builders are one class of people, and they're great, and they work hard, and you know you also get your bad ones, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of really good builders out there. Um, same with home remodeling. Mm -hmm. You know, you take that top 10, maybe 20%, mm -hmm. they're worth their weight in gold, and that's about what they charge you. Sure. But then the other ones are just nightmares. Okay. So it's just one thing after another. All about money. It's all about getting in and sure. out. A lot of times they don't even have the knowledge, or the subs don't have the knowledge uh. to do it right. And it's all about money. Get, get sure. in and get out. Sure. I suppose the barrier to entry to become a builder is pretty low, right? A truck and a hammer, more or less. Right, right. So give me a credit card to go to the exactly. I mean, to, be, to be a real a home builder, you have to be a certain level. To be a home remodeler, you don't need anything. Okay. And so the first thing I tell people is to make sure that your remodelers are contract that they have their license, their contractor's mm -hmm. license. They at least went that far to go out and get your contractor's license. What is contractor's license? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a, it's a, there's, you need two of them. Okay. Uh, the first one you need is just called general contractor's license. Okay. And that's to kind of prove that you have a, you've been in one place for a while. You actually have a location, even if it's just your house. Sure. But the main thing is that you have to have insurance to have that. So you have to have viability and insurance. Sure. And then the second uh, license you need to pull a permit it's called a, a, a dwelling a qualifier license. Okay. And that means you went through the whole, all the millions of tests. It's like a 150 question test you have to study for and blah, blah, sure. blah, blah. So if you have those two, at least you've taken your profession seriously. Mm -hmm. And at least you're keeping up with your insurance. Sure. And that would be step number one. Okay. Are these state run licensing yeah. or is mm -hmm. this through some other third party? It's through a state. It's okay. through, yeah. The DPS, what's that? Department of Professional services um, okay they're the ones who license a lot of different uh industries gotcha. they're the ones who license the the home improvement business okay. and the contractor's license so something like that once you get that license or those licenses i should say are you then set for life or do you know you renew? gotta renew every two years okay again that's good uh because it keeps me keeps you make sure you're insured mm -hmm. make sure you stay in the ball game you're taking your your uh your new continuing education test. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's a, sometimes to the, us contractors, it seems kind of silly, but I can see why they do it just to kind of weed out the people sure. who don't even want to go that far. Gotcha. Yeah, and those are the, the one man and a truck type people. All right. You know. So the people running around, are there contractors running around without licenses? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of them. Okay. Um, so that's why I tell, and if they haven't gone that far, it means they don't take it seriously. That means you stay away from them. Okay. So the first thing you ask for is their license because at least you know they're insured then. Sure. So if something happens on the job, mm -hmm. then their insurance will cover it. You don't it. lose your house because some guy fell off your roof. Yeah, right, right exactly. Okay. Some so, guy that wasn't licensed didn't <laughs> know yeah, any better. Right. Just a buddy. Yeah, they subbed it out to some roofing company that none of them have insurance. Mm -hmm. and the guy falls, mm -hmm. and at least that contractor's insurance will cover it. Then. Sure. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So why would a homeowner go to someone like you versus just trying to find a builder or renovator on their own? And they can. Okay. Um, the, pro the, the the issue then is why I started my company is because they don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. So you can go, you know, most people just Google it, right? Sure. So you just go Google it. Well, all you're getting there, the, uh, the home renovators have a lot of money to be on the first few pages of Google. Sure. That's so all, you know, first top half of the page is all paid. Mm -hmm. So it's all paid advertising. So you think, well, are they any good? Or are they just throwing a bunch of ads out there? Sure. And um, so first of all, you got to find someone who's good somehow, some way. So you can do that by looking on Yelp and some other reviews. And sure. You got to be careful with some of the reviews that are AngelList or Home Advisor. You got to be mm -hmm. careful with those. I would never trust those. Mm -hmm. But there's so much, you know, you, you do, if you're really good at searching, you can get, you can uh, do your research. You probably can come up with someone who's okay. Okay. But then you got to uh, find out uh, about their pricing. How sure. would you ever know? Sure. And you want to do this with three different people. Sure. And each one's going to come to your house for three hours. Right. So now you got nine hours plus research times. You might have 12 hours in this project. Mm -hmm. And you got three bids, and you don't know. They're not really, it's hard to compare apples to apples. Sure. So you just take the low bid. Right. 75% of the time, that's a mistake. Sure. So it's really, if it, unless they're all three really close, mm -hmm. then the low one's 
probably missed something. Okay. Or doesn't know how to estimate or sure. something. Sure. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong. Yeah, so I take care of all that. Okay. Right. And since the builders are the ones who pay me, mm -hmm. or the homeowners pay me, it's free to the homeowner. Oh, gotcha. Nice. Right. right. Okay. And so they just pay me a small fee that they would use for marketing anyway. They, the builder. The, the builders. Or the pay. subcontractors. Yeah. Whoever, okay. They just pay me off their marketing budget, basically. So, sure. um, why why wouldn't homeowners use me to do sure. all that legwork with them? Because mm -hmm. my people are vetted for, for licenses. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they're going to be in the house, they have to see drug tests. Mm -hmm. And they have to give me good references. And mm -hmm. I go check them out. Most of the people, most industries, I know the good, the bad, and the ugly about all of them anyway. Sure. So I know the good guys and the bad guys. Right. Okay. But so you take care of the vetting and all that jazz? I take care of all the vetting. And then the, the, the biggest thing is time frames. Mm -hmm. Someone says, well, I need this done in, in, in a few weeks. I just laugh because that's not going to happen. <laughs> but they can. Uh, I don't want what another typical trick that remodelers do and builders is they tell you, okay, we'll, be st we'll start you know, sometime in the spring. And sure. It's, it's pretty big. Right. You know, sometime. Big window. <laughs> well, you may not see them until, and then they, they don't return the calls, which is right. no, they're notorious for not returning calls. Right. Absolutely notorious. And then when they do return your call, it's, well, sorry, sorry, I got behind. I'll give you a call in a week or so. Mm -hmm. Another three weeks goes by. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you wanted to have this, you know, you contacted them in, in February about having a nice gazebo and everything for your 4th of July party. And here it is June. They haven't started yet. Sure. And so all of a sudden, one day you're sitting there and it's 7 o'clock in the morning. You hear a bunch of trucks and here they are at your front house. You're like, right. What? Haven't seen them for three weeks. <laughs> no least, call. No calls. All of a sudden, they show up. Yeah. Well, and then what happens is they show up to tear up your bathroom. You're all set to go, and then you don't see them for another two weeks. And your bathroom's sitting there all apart. Sure. And all oh, sorry, we had to run and finish up on our job. Right. right. So all these nightmares that you read about and hear about all the time are now on my shoulders. Sure. So. You know, it's interesting because you look at something like Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, all that kind of stuff. Right. They're aimed at the do-it-yourselfer. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people would prefer to pay someone. Yeah. But they're just, they tried maybe, just to, they went on the old Google machine, right, and searched for some home renovator, kitchen remodeling, whatever. And they found a few that, you know, maybe they tried to call 10. Nobody answered any of them, or if one did, they said, oh, I'll give you a call back, right? They left a bunch of messages. Right. Haven't heard anything. You're like, you know what? There's only going to be one of two ways this happens. Either it's not going to get done, or I have to do it. Right. So it's good to have someone like you, the home advocate, that they can call up and they'll actually get a human, get scheduled, get it taken care of, and at least get the ball rolling and all that jazz. And then you take care of the headache of getting Absolutely. all the subs and all that jazz. Absolutely. So I'm the, I'm the go-between. Mm -hmm. and, um, and because I've been in the field, so I know a good contract looks like. Mm -hmm. I know how to hold them to the metrics, mm -hmm. whether it's time or quality. Sure. So I can uh, make sure everything happens as smooth as possible. Sure. And you still always have hiccups, right? Because you never know what you run into. Right. You go take down the wall, and there's a bunch of mice and mess in there. And sure. So it's going to add some time and some cost. Mm -hmm. But we, we usually talk all about that before we even get started. Sure. About possible things that imagine, can go wrong. Yeah, I imagine that's a problem with any construction job of any kind. Right. right. Even if you're replacing windows like we were talking about before, mm -hmm. maybe some rot that you couldn't see before that all of a yeah. sudden you take out this big chunk of window. Now you can see it. Mm -hmm. And we, we talk about that with everybody. Here's the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Because your house is 25 years old and your windows have been very wet, there's a good chance that your that your frame's going to be rotted. Mm -hmm. In which case, here's the cost and here's the extra time. They, so they're well aware of that. Mm -hmm. And if they're at work, I'll take a picture of it and send them to it on their phone so they can okay. see what we ran into. Sure. So I don't quick cover it up before they get home. Right. So um, that's another, another good service that we offer. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So how long has this been around? Only, I think, not even three years yet. Okay. Is when I decided that we need an advocate. Sure. And um, I used to do some talk. I haven't done any of this year. I used to do talks at senior centers because a lot of seniors were getting ready to downsize to move mm -hmm. into some sort of senior housing. Sure. And they didn't trust anybody with their homes. All right, and, fair. Right. And Can't they say I blame them. Right. And they're not, they're not uh, you know, big Googlers, mm -hmm. so they didn't know where to even start. Right. Yellow pages don't exist a whole lot anymore. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, they, they, I'd go give talks on things to look out for. And, sure. Uh, and so they would, after the talk, they'd come up and say, well, we'd, we'd like to work with you. So it all, it all worked out really well, and we had some good times with, with some of them. Nice. Yeah. 
Well, that sounds all right. So what did you do before? I guess we, we left off at your, the window installation, mm-hmm. then moved into window sales. Yeah, and I've been, I've uh, installed or worked in or owned just about anything to do with construction except for electrical and plumbing. I just okay. have, I have no desire. Sure. So uh, everything else I've either worked in and or sold or worked with. Okay. So, in fact, I used to own a uh, uh, behalf owner of a roofing and siding and window business. I had equity in a uh, flooring company, which is really okay. good to learn all about flooring and how sure. that works. Sure. Um, so, as I've gone through all these, uh, and that's what, another reason I wanted to become an advocate, people were actually telling me, you know, you know everything. I used to, oh, by the way, I used to own a landscape company, too. Did worked, you really? Worked with softscapes and hardscapes. Oh, what in the world? So, yeah. So, um, why'd I'd, you get rid of that? Uh, that was a tough one. People don't know. They think that mowing lawns is a big, um, a big ticket item. It's not. Sure. It's hard to make a living mowing lawns. Oh, really? You got okay. all these people with you. You got all this high speed equipment to work out. You got breakdowns. You got maintenance. Mm-hmm. Um, if you just do, well, that's called softscapes, mm-hmm. mowing and stuff like that. And if you do just softscapes, and you run a clean ship, and you work hard, and you make everyone come in on Saturdays to change their oil and change their blades. And sure. So, you're talking about 5% profit, maybe. At the oh, end. really? Yeah, it's oh. a tough one. So the only way you can do it is so you do a, a, a junk job or junk mowers, which end up doing a junk job. Sure. Or you do hardscapes with it, which is the patios and so on. Okay, yeah. okay. And, that's, and that can be a lot of fun. But for that, you're talking about to really do it good, you sh- you'd get a little bigger and you'd have uh, uh, people went to school just for that. Sure. And I didn't want to get into that. So, gotcha, yeah. okay. No. So you end up closing them or selling them? Or that one, end up that one I sold okay. to uh, my top employee. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, the flooring I just got out of. And then the uh, window company I sold to, to my partner, actually. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So can you, let's just touch on window sales. Okay. Because that's always something, you and I have talked about this before offline. Where it just seems to be the slime of the slime. <laughs> yeah, the, right. In sales of any kind, right. window salespeople just seem to be a notch or two below mortgage and used car salespeople. Yeah, if you're about 10 notches below. I, I have, and, and if you ever had listened to my talks, and I, uh, there's a portion that's put aside just for window salesmen. Oh, really? Okay. That's how bad it's getting. All right. And now they're finding out that there's also a lot of seniors moving out, and they're kind of low-hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. They still do things on a handshake. Sure. It's, my favorite line is, oh, but he was such a nice guy. Oh. And it becomes kind of a fun theme throughout my talk about window salesmen. Funny. Because they come into your house. Now, they have to be in there for uh, about three hours. If they're, wow. not, if they're not in there for three hours, that means they did not do their job. And their manager actually gets upset with them. Okay. I mean, they didn't no, do their job from their manager's point of view, not necessarily right. the homeowner's point of view. So, so you walk in there, and first of all, that when you set the appointment with, the, with, with this company, window company, and the uh, person setting the appointment on the other line, the receptionist, whoever, will say, will both decision makers be there? Mm. Well, no, my wife doesn't care. Well, no, well, we need them both there. Sure. Because there'll be lots of questions, sure. colors, everything. And, it, well, okay, well, that's not why they're doing it. Doing it because at the end of this whole three-hour presentation, yeah. and you give them this price, mm-hmm. and you can. it's so easy to say, well, Mr. Salesman, I'd like to, but I'm just going to ask my spouse. Sure. There's no comeback for that. All right. So they're dead in the water. Sure. So there's even companies out there that are so unscrupulous that when they walk in and they got their all their samples of windows and corner cuts, everything with mm-hmm. them, they walk in, they oh, glad to see you, Mr. Homebuyer. Hey, where's your, where's your wife? I thought she was going to be here. Oh, sorry, she had to run down. Billy's got a hockey game. We forgot about both. Sure. Now, rather than go through this all to have that, well, I got to ask my wife, the, the salesman will just say, well, Okay, but there's a lot of questions. That, boy, oh boy, I tell you what, when's a good time I can come back where I can catch you both there? Sure. They makes it sound like they're doing it because there's all these questions. They're not. They're doing it because they don't want that objection at the end. Sure. So it's all about sales. They right? want somebody to have the ability to say yes because yeah. right now without that other spouse or whatever. It's too easy to say I got to ask. All they have is the ability yeah. to say no. Yeah. They don't even have the ability to say yes. Absolutely. So that you can start with that. Then you can go and then they sit down and they got Mr. and Mrs homeowner there and they got all these samples and they got a kit to show with a hot light why their glass 
is better than everybody else's glass. Mm -hmm. And then they have a, a, a sample window to open and close because they know that you think it, they're being nice, showing everything. They're doing it because in your mind, in the homeowner's mind, mm -hmm. once you get your hands on stuff, you get sure. involved. Something tangible, you can touch yeah, it. Yeah, and you've been here for three hours now. Sure. And he spent all this time, and he's really nice. He's asked me about my kids and their and their gymnastic program because his kid went sure. to gymnastic. Sure. And then they're measuring all the windows, and then they're doing this big, and then <laughs> they pull out their big, uh, their big iPad, and they show you this big PowerPoint presentation about how their company is the best company in the world. Sure. All that is for at the very end. When it comes time to close the sale, mm -hmm. you can't say, well, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, you've you've seen the, the window, right? And you can you can probably agree with me. This is like the best window out there after mm -hmm. everything I went through. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can and I've shown you my company on my iPad. And you can see where we're really reputable. Where if there's something wrong, you know that we're gonna be there. Would yeah. you would you agree that we're the best company uh, someone you could trust to have your yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I hope you like me, right? Am sure. I, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, well, okay, well, I tell you what, I'm going to get the paperwork going. Why don't we just get this done now? Sure. Get them on the yes cycle. Yeah, get them <laughs> on the yes cycle. And so then you start saying, and then if they say, well, we'd, we'd like to, uh, yes to all those stuff, but we got two more people coming. Mm -hmm. We're going to get three bids. And the first thing the sales went, really? So, let me see, I've been here three and a half hours, so you, you're willing to put in about 12 hours <laughs> sure. just for what you know and they go was again was there anything you didn't see in the window what well, I mean, sure what, what didn't i show you that you're looking for because mm -hmm. i know it means you just want more information i know that right. you know that right so you tell me what i need to tell you what did <laughs> i tell you for you to get my, your your business sure. today? have i earned your business today mm -hmm. yeah, yeah all right well and then and then even then if you, well I, that's fine but i just know angie's list told me i should get three bids sure so i'm not going to do anything with three bids i'm mm -hmm. just not Okay, I tell you what, time is money. It cost me about four hundred. It cost my company four hundred dollars to send me out here, if you include all the marketing costs and everything else. Sure. So I will tell you what, if we sign right now, I don't have to come back. I don't have to go through half this again. Mm -hmm. I'll take instead of four hundred, I'm going to double it. If I give you eight hundred dollars in your pocket right now, would that be something you'd be interested in? To get this. Sure. Yeah. You know, so you're trying all these lines, right. right? Right. And then after like two or three, what they call drop, that's a drop. Mm -hmm. After two or three drops, you're still not biting. Right. They go, okay, I understand. We don't work under pressure, even though they've been pressuring you for the sure. last hour. <laughs> right. We don't work under pressure. So I tell you what, I'm just going to fill out this form real quick that shows that you didn't want to buy, right? Didn't want to make a decision today. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to, if you if you wanted to sign it for me, it means that you didn't, I didn't hold a gun to your head or mm -hmm. anything. And then I'm just going to call my boss real quick, find out where my next stop is. Sure. Does that sound okay? Yeah, yeah, we'll sign it. So what he's doing is calling his boss, and his boss will say, uh, okay, let, let me talk to him real quick. Hey, Mr. Mr. Homer, my boss just wants to talk to you. He thinks that I did something wrong. He thinks that maybe, you know, we got a great window, great cut. Maybe it was me. Sure. Can you just tell him that he's nice? Would that be okay? <laughs> All right. So then the boss gets on the phone, and he'll go through the whole thing again. Sure. Mr. Mr. Homer, it cost me a lot of money to get him there. What's it going to take? You tell me. Sure. I, I can cut you deals that Jim can't. So I'll, I'm willing to cut you a deal right now. You know you want this window for your house, right? Right. So let's get it done. <laughs> so these are, and this is the way these companies are working now. Sure. Instead of hiring people who have been in construction who know windows, mm -hmm. they're hiring these young guns who have never picked up a, a screwdriver in their life. Sure. But they're really good. They used to be selling used cars. Sure. They used to sell insurance that didn't work out. So Their job is to close the deal regardless of what it is that they're selling. Close the deal regardless, right? Okay. Right. And which is all, you know, and that's all, that's, you know, if everyone's got their journey. But the problem is now you paid for that salesman. Sure. Typically 10%. Mm -hmm. So that salesman just made 10% off you when um, they really knew nothing about windows or install. Oh, nothing interesting. To do with the okay. Yeah. They just knew how to get you to say yes. Yeah. And they work for a company where there's managers that make six figures and, and managers, managers that make six figures. Mm -hmm. And then you got a 10,000 square foot showroom. So you sure. can imagine what that does to their costs sure. of their windows. Sure. So, so in the end, people are going to have to get windows somehow, right? Right. So what do they do or what should they exactly. do? Exactly. So the best thing to do is to uh, use, use Google. It's okay. a big thing. And then to just do your shopping. And just do not, do not, do not fall for any of these things. So if you call a company and just, if you, if you, if they absolutely have to get out to your house, mm -hmm. um, then say, okay, come on out. But I'm only giving you, I'm just telling you right now, you got one hour. I'm not going to do this three hour thing. Sure. If, if that's we, it. <laughs> try to wear them down. Well, 
And there's people who buy just because they said, I just want him on my house. He wouldn't leave. Yeah, me. right. So I just signed. Sure. You know, or he was such a nice guy. I can't believe that I paid <laughs> 50, 50% more than I should have. Sure. So, and, and most of those companies have good windows. Mm -hmm. It's just too bad they have this business model where six people got to get paid on every window that mm -hmm. goes out. You know? Sure, sure. So That adds to the total cost, and in the end it comes oh, out of the homeowner's yeah, pocketbook. Yeah, I mean, this, it, not too long ago, when average double hung was for with those companies was going for about thousand dollars twelve hundred dollars okay there's one place in town that was up to almost two thousand dollars for those wow why well, can get you know or or uh, you know other venues can get you that same window for probably seven hundred fifty dollars wow installed yeah. oh yeah oh wow yeah that just shows you how that business model of all the big showrooms and all the salespeople mm -hmm. and all the managers mm -hmm. that just does so much to the cost of the window sure so Interesting. You don't necessarily get better service. Some people think that, well, I'm willing to pay the thousand dollars window because I got this great company behind you. They make just as many mistakes. Okay. They used to have the same window installers that everybody does. Sure. A lot of times they're subcontractors. Sure. Even if they're not, they're just they're no better than the other guys. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. I really like people to do is that if they can find a carpenter mm -hmm. who will do windows. Mm -hmm. It's not his only thing. But he's willing to put in windows because they. Sure. Uh, I've seen. I haven't seen many carpenters that are not expert window installers, mm. and they'll take the time to do it right. Sure. Yeah, especially if they run into problems, they know how to fix them. Sure. Whereas these uh, subcontractors that just do windows by by the window mm -hmm. don't know what to do when they run into stuff, so they just quick stick it in there, throw a bunch of caulk, and run. So they see some rot and they say, "Whoa, oh, I don't want this nightmare. Yeah. Lunch is soon." Let's just stick a piece of raw wood on there. We'll throw it in the window. We'll caulk it. They'll never see it. Sure. And it happens all the time. So if they can find a good carpenter mm -hmm. who, who's willing to put in windows, mm -hmm. um, that carpenter will go to a, uh, a supply shop here in town and get the windows, and they're okay. They're not top line, but they're fine. Sure. They're they're a thirty three year window. Okay. Thirty or three? Thirty. Thirty. Yeah. Okay. You know, they'll last thirty years before you start okay. having problems with them. What? That's a while? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What should they last? I don't know. Thirty well, years. Well, you know, they all like talk about time. these fifty year and, and the the biggest scam is the hundred year warranty or the lifetime warranty. Okay. Well, there's no no one's ever gonna hold them to it. And they're usually a prorated, which means after ten years it's really not worth much anyway. Sure. And usually in the first two years is when you'll know mm -hmm. if there's something wrong with the window or something sure. wrong with the install. Gotcha. You'll see leaks or the condensation yeah, or whatever. Okay. Yeah, things won't open right. They won't operate right. Mm -hmm. If you have a good carpenter who gives you, uh, get, puts in a decent window, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be good. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. So if somebody wanted to find you to, to pick your brain or have you look over blueprints or double check their their builders work or just have you in there to bring in the people that you work with mm -hmm. how how can they reach you you can just go to my website it's the easiest okay homeadvocatemadison.com okay real simple awesome so the the homeowner is going to reach out to you you're going to help them find the people going to get that the jobs all taken care of are there any jobs that are too big or too small no we do everything from from replacing a garbage disposal mm -hmm. up to hundred and fifty thousand dollar uh, additions Okay. And everything in between. What's big right now are kitchen remodels, bathroom remodels, and basement renovations. Sure. Everyone changing their basement or their attic into a usable space. Sure. Is big right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, same with kitchen remodels. And that's why there's a lot of these people. Uh, another reason I came into this business because I, I came into this about the same time that started really getting hot. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of the, I don't want to say scamming, but that's where a lot of problems are coming in. Okay. Um, so all these companies that used to be roofing companies decided, well, if I'm going to put in roofing, I might as well put in windows. So they sure. became roofing windows and siding companies. And for years, that's how they operated. Sure. And now, because that's too competitive and too easy for people to compare pricing, they went into, uh, sure, we'll do exteriors, but we want to do kitchens and bath remodels and mm -hmm. basement remodels, but mainly okay. kitchen and baths. Sure. Because they're, uh, they're, if you're in someone's home for – hours and hours going over the kitchen designs, meeting with their kitchen design people, mm -hmm. picking out cabinets. You're probably not going to do that with more than one company. Assuming sure. you like that. that uh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's a good chance you're not. And if they if they need blueprints, everything, they're going to say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, we'll do them, but the blueprints are expensive. So we're going to charge you $1,500 for the full kitchen design, 
which is reasonable if you knew today's prices. However, we're going to go one step further, one step further, and subtract that fifteen hundred from your job. Uh, uh, sure. At the end. Okay. And that's just so you don't take all that work we did for and go get it bid out among everybody else. Right. Which you're welcome to do, but you'll lose. But we got to protect ourselves. Sure. And that, and that's I, I think that's fair too. I think I don't think there's anything out right. of bounds with that. Right. But what is out of bounds is that's actually from their point of view they're just doing it to tie you in. Sure. So gotcha. So that's why all the all these uh, uh, hot shot companies are going to baths and kitchens now because mm-hmm. they know that's where there's no competition. They can charge what they want basically. Sure. Interesting. So yeah. All right. And they'll blame the high cost and the cost of wood or the tariffs or the price of quartz or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they're just making a lot of money off people. Sure. So one of the things that I've noticed from owning a house for, I don't know, it seems like forever, but I know the house isn't paid off, so it must not be quite forever, <laughs> um, is that when I try to get a job done and you try to call construction companies, landscapers, whatever, you just cannot get a hold of anyone. And when you leave a message, um, we're still having this problem with gutters. I think I called 10 gutter places. And I even had one that had some answering service answer. You could tell it was this little call center because you could hear 50 million people in the background talking. And they and the guy was useless because he's like, oh, someone will come out to check out your gutters. Right? And no one ever did. And right. I said, oh, are we scheduling? Like, when are they coming out? And they're like, no, 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 no we don't schedule it because they're outside, so it's just when they're in your neighborhood. And nothing ever happened with that. That was the closest one that I got to two-way communication with any one of these companies. Yeah. Outside of that, I just leave a message, and I haven't heard anything back. Is that something? So when somebody reaches out to you and they get a hold of you and they get in contact with you, are you able to actually get in touch with these contractors? Mm-hmm. You have because a red I, phone or something like that to them? Well, most people who have been fully vetted by me, uh, you know, I give them a fair amount of business. Mm-hmm. And I, I do, I ex- help expedite the whole thing, make it a lot easier in them too. Sure. Okay. Because uh, I'm the one dealing with the homeowner also. Sure. So uh, they're, they're more than eager to work with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so if someone calls up, we'll get out to their house. We try to get out with there in 48 hours mm-hmm. to meet with them, to go sure. over all their renovations, go over all their budgets, everything. Sure. And then within another 48 hours, I get uh, whoever I think is a good fit for them out there. I'm almost always there in that first meeting because, again, I'm working for the advocate. So I want to make sure that they're comfortable with this builder that I, mm-hmm. I thought would be a good a good fix for them for not only quality but for price. Sure. And uh, if they like that person, everything's fine. Then I asked the builder homeowner, you got 48 hours to give him an estimate now. Oh, gotcha. So okay. we really, that alone saves months. If people knew what it's like now, and if you're out there, and you, you've touched on it a little bit, there's people who can't find anyone to return their call even. Sure. Um, you know, the messages, emails, no one's returning their call. They finally give up, or they come out there. Yeah, okay, they come out there in a week, um, week or two. They overlook everything. Everything sounds good. And then you don't hear from them for like two or three months. Sorry, I'm just way behind estimates. Sure. And that is so common. Uh, and then you finally do get the estimate. Now it's been two months already. Sure. Or, you know, anywhere from four to eight weeks. Mm-hmm. And now you say, okay, let's start. Okay, what do you need? Oh, I need a down payment of a third or half or sure. whatever. And they give you a down payment. You may not even hear from them for four, five, six months. That's crazy. Yeah, it's just the way it is right now. Sure. These guys have so much business. Mm-hmm. They're just going after low-hanging fruit. So they can treat customers essentially like dirt because there's so yeah. many customers. Well, especially once they get your down payment check. Sure. You know? So that's uh, another thing I watch out for. That's not going to happen on my watch, right? Mm-hmm. So um, uh, even if you don't give them a down payment, you may never, ever hear from them again. Sure. Yeah, he came over. He did the estimate. He looked at everything. It was going good. Um, I said, fine. We'll use you. Boom, never heard from them again. <laughs> and they <laughs> just, so yeah, it's just a crazy world, right? So uh, that's that's another reason we need a, a home advocate mm-hmm. to get mm-hmm. on the side of these homeowners who are get, sure. getting taken like this. It is so interesting that you mentioned that because I, I see time and time again these guys, these co- c- construction companies, they're tossing thousands of dollars to home shows and yeah. all this kind of stuff. They collect all these leads. And then they don't do anything with it. You think, man, if you would just spend a little bit of money or even just a little bit of time following up on all the people that you already made promises to, yeah. you'd be rolling smooth. You wouldn't need any, any of these expos shows. or anything like right, that. Right, right. I also thought that too. You know, for how much money uh, they spend on 
customer acquisition, mm -hmm. and then they find they just totally dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. I thought, boy, it's huge. A, yeah, it, it, but you know, and it's a point you and I have talked about before that just because you're a good carpenter doesn't make you a good businessman. Right. So to own your own company, you have to be both. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to know your trade, right? And you have to have some good business acumen to make it work, right? Yeah, so. you think of how many companies in the in the contracting world, right? Whether it's painters or plumbers or right. whatever, are just one man shows, and they're they essentially own their job, right? And they're not the greatest in the world. Books are probably a mess if they even exist. Yeah, you wonder what tax time looks like for them. Oh goodness, yeah, if there is one, they. Uh, yeah, so to, I you're almost better off finding someone who's just got really good business acumen, and they can find you. Sure. So you know, sure. So I, I, by luck, I happen to be a blend of both. Mm -hmm. So I can find the good people because I know stuff. Sure. Keep everyone in line. Mm -hmm. Keep try to keep up. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm perfect or mm -hmm. that the system's perfect yet. We're always tweaking it. Sure. I mean, but stuff happens, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the saying in remodeling is. Everything's going to cost twice as much and take twice as long. <laughs> and it's just, and you, you I mean, Hope for the future there. Yeah, boy. I mean, there's so many times when the twice as long almost comes true. Sure. Um, it's just hard holding. And sometimes they're just bad estimators of time. Mm -hmm. They just think, okay, I can do this in a month. When I right. do darn well, it's going to take them two. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. but as long, as long, and that's all, you know, stuff happens. But what they need, what people drop the ball is when they talk to the homeowner, if they would be up front with them saying, Here's our industry. Here's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Here's what can happen. We try to hold that out to a minimum. Sure. Which is why I'm successful and what I do. So I'm going to, we're going to stick, but just stick with me here. Mm -hmm. So if there's a big snow day or uh, the drywaller uh, uh, had run to the hospital. Sure. It's not just one day. Right. Now the painters say, wait a minute. You push the whole schedule. calendar. Yeah. And they don't just push it one day. It could push it weeks out. It's like a huge domino. And sure. Could, so if one thing happens along the way, mm -hmm. it, can, it can throw everything off. Sure. And by quite a ways. Mm -hmm. Which is okay if you have an advocate sitting there telling you every day, here's what happened. Right. Here's why. Here's what we're looking at now. Mm -hmm. But I warned you ahead of time. We talked about this, so it shouldn't come as a surprise. Right. Uh, we know you have two bathrooms. You have to still use that one for a while because mm -hmm. it's going to take another week. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Sure. Again, it's, it's, it's all about communication. Sure. Oh, the name of the game. That's yeah. the magic word right there. Yeah. A lot of... A lot of builders, renovators that I've dealt with, um, there have been some that have been really good at communication, but they're the exception to the rule. Right. The majority of them are terrible. Oh, just horrible. Just horrible. Yeah. And so Even in person. Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah, not that good. Right, right. A lot of these people, are there, you know, they're not going to win awards for their personality. Sure. They're good at what they do, and they should stick to it and let someone else run the, run right. the show. Right, right. Yeah. Interesting. So – You've been in business a few years, and you, you've seen a lot of ups and downs in regards to the construction industry. Right. What have been some of the things that you've learned over the course of time that you'd like to share with the audience? Some of the things I've learned along the course of time. Um, one is that I would highly discourage do-it-yourselfers. Okay. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen so many nightmares. It's unbelievable. Unless unless you really really have an aptitude for it, mm -hmm. or unless you don't care if it all goes wrong, you at least can sure. try it. Sure. So if if you have those two in it, okay, give it a shot. Mm -hmm. But the worst thing ever happened was YouTube because <laughs> I, went, I can do it. I can tile this floor. Sure. Right, I'm gonna go on YouTube and I'll tile it. Right. You know, and uh, the story about the toilets that rock because the yep. new tile wasn't straight. Sure. It wasn't you know flat and. Yep. Uh, it's on, 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 on. All these do-it-yourselfers. Mm -hmm. and, and they're trying to save money. I right. get that. But they'll end up spending more, mm -hmm. and it's going to make a bigger mess, and mm -hmm. it's not going to be nearly as good looking. Sure. So there's some times when it is appropriate, and I'll talk to the homeowners say, how do you feel about this? Right. If there's a way I can save them money, mm -hmm. they always want to know that. Right. But typically they'll say, I'll say, okay, here's what I'm going to do for you. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to do it. We're going to do it in a week. Okay, well, how much... How much can I save if I help you? I go, the price doubles. Because <laughs> that's it's right. just, yeah, if you're not a licensed carpenter right. or you're not, you're just in my way, you're going to cost right. me more. Spend more time teaching you how to do it right. Oh, I remember the days yeah. I used to be a mechanic. Right. And I was under a car one day and the guy, this some old guy, super nice guy, but he gets under there. <laughs> he's grabbing wrenches. I was like, oh, time out here, buddy. What are you doing? What do you do? I'm all elbows. I don't want to be smacking you in the head. You got no safety gear on. I don't know what you know about the car. 
Like, if this messes up, right, your car blows up five minutes out of here, who's liable? Right. You're going to come screaming to me when you're the one who tightened the wrench or, or didn't tighten the screw or whatever. Right. So I'm like, no, no, no. Either you want us to work on it or you want to work on it. There's right. no gray area here. No, no. There are places like that. Like, uh, in one case uh, this year, we had someone who uh, gutted their kitchen. They okay. wanted to save some money. Sure. So they, I said, if you want to do the demo work, you seem right. you seem young and strong. Sure. Um, I'll pull out my dumpster here. Mm -hmm. If you want to take two or three days to tear everything out. Sure. But it's very cut and dry. Mm -hmm. Not that not that gray area you were just talking about. Yeah. You know. So if you want, you you got three days to to completely gut it. And yeah. And I'm coming in, and okay. here's here's what you'll save. Right. Yeah. That's so fair. You, yeah, you can do that. So you're not um, working at the same time as two separate right. projects, right? And, and, it was, and, and the, and the uh, labor is very distinct. Who does mm -hmm. what? The division of labor. Sure. Um, I've had people uh, um, who wanted to do the painting. They all think that painting is the low-hanging fruit. Right? Sure. So I say, okay, it'll save you a little bit. Right. Uh, but um, here's the good, the bad, the ugly about painting. Just mm -hmm. let you know. And I'm in, in no way, shape, or form. So I have to write my contract. Painting and all problems associated are up to the owner. Sure. Then, yeah, go ahead and do your own painting. All right. But you wait till we're all done. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's little things like that they sure. can save. Okay. Um, what would have been some of the benefits of owning your own business? Well, the freedom, like everybody. You sure. say, why do most people want to go into business for themselves? They either say money or freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's usually freedom more than money. You wouldn't think so, but that's I think statistically that's what it is. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Even though, and you know this better than anybody, when you're an entrepreneur, people say, well, I'm sick of getting up and working 8 to 5. Mm -hmm. Good, because as an entrepreneur, you're going to be working 6 to 8. You're like, yeah. those hours better. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so that's what happens. So, uh so, but it's your time. So right. You, so, for some reason, I can put in 60 hours. It feels like working 30 for someone else. Sure. So That's fair. That's yeah. totally fair. Yeah. So, I like that. I, I like the, uh, uh, not only the freedom, what goes on in freedom is the, my choice. Mm -hmm. So, it's beautiful, beautiful summer day. And my wife's saying, you know what? Let's just play hooky and go <laughs> get a picnic or whatever. So, sure. I can do that. I can just go do what I want. Sure. I can create my own lunch hours because a lot of times I like to meet people over lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, I have business meetings. I can uh, take off when I want. Mm -hmm. uh, but to let people know that, you know, you, the phone starts ringing at my house around 630 in the morning. Sure. And a lot of times it doesn't start. I'm getting an email at 10 o'clock at night. I need to answer. Right, right. So it's a lot of hours, but the freedom is definitely worth it. Sure. You That's know? fair. That's yeah. fair. I keep think I have some people that are emailing me over the weekend, and I like to have a – email inbox zero on friday afternoon right see so see saturday morning like man i got all these emails you guys got to just shut it off yeah yeah <laughs> just wait yeah. till monday morning put a controlled send on it or something like that a scheduled right. send so we don't have to deal with this but let me enjoy my weekend yeah i, do, I think i think i'm probably as an entrepreneur i probably go overboard in the service end of it a little bit because as i'm trying to grow you you give them Top of the line service, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I will be, you know, I'm answering emails at 10 o'clock at night. I'm, I'm answering emails uh, Sunday night. Sure. Um, you know, whenever you can squeeze it in, you go and, mm -hmm. and, and return some texts or some emails. Um, sure. And then Saturday mornings, I may run to the office and do some paperwork and shit again. Sure. So um, with that freedom comes a lot of responsibility. Sure. Too. Sure. So you got to stay on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And we talked about. Uh, having a business acumen helps. Oh, huge. Yeah, because otherwise you would just, uh, or you have the money to uh, shell it all out. <laughs> so if you if you can open up camp and you can already hire a day to day accountant, you can already hire. Right. You know, then you're then you then you're fine. But most people when they start off don't uh, don't have those kind of financial freedom right away. No, it's interesting from the classes that I've taught and talking to some of the clients that I have with business coaching you learn there are some assumptions that I had about people that own businesses that they knew stuff like what a P&L is and a balance sheet is. Yeah. And they knew to keep track of money coming in and going out. Right. And that's not the case. No. That is no. so not the case, which blew my mind. Cause I'm yeah. like, how do you know if you're making money? Like, yeah. yeah. If I have some in my wallet, I guess it's good. <laughs> you know, and, you, and you hit a good point. From my, from my experience, what I can see is that most people do not keep track of their accounts payable mm -hmm. so they think at the end of the month wow i had a good month but they haven't paid their bills yet sure yep you know or all the money in the bank we're yeah, all good <laughs> yeah so once you have checks you have money right so uh, <laughs> yeah 
or we can always just get an extension on our, on our credit card because I know next month will be really good. Yeah, yep. You know, that's that's a scary one. Too. One more week. Yeah. <laughs> cool, I get it. Well, Jim, thank you very much for stopping by. This has been a blast. Yeah, I think you. you helped a lot of homeowners with some information. Why don't you tell us the website one more time? It's uh, at homeadvocatemadison.com. Awesome, homeadvocatemadison.com. Couldn't be easier. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the country. My name is James Kademan, and Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call, offering call answering and receptionist services for small businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com, as well as Draw in Customers Business Coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs in all stages of their business on the web at drawincustomers.com. And, of course, The Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur and all of us, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. This radio program has been brought to you by Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. You can find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as sunprairiemediacenter.com. And, Jim, I want to thank you once again for coming over. Oh, thanks for having me. HomeAdvocateMadison.com. Awesome. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link, found at DrawInCustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. If you do nothing else, enjoy your business.